I'm Tony Allen. I work as a software engineer at Nutanix. There are some really interesting people that make the company what it is, and I wanted to get to know them better. Each episode, we do a blind taste test of three different craft brews while discussing a variety of topics. This is Beers with Engineers. Today, my guest is Michael Webster, business critical apps engineer. Mike, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm excited because you're not usually in the Durham office because you're from New Zealand and you're a very big deal here at Nutanix, at least to me personally, right? So I got a few questions for you and apparently you have chosen beers for me to I try. I have, yeah. yeah. So, so now you've got to pick them out. You've I, got to figure out what they are. <laughs> so what exactly, you want me to try the beer and then tell you what kind of beer it is or what exact beer it is given the menu? Uh, well, you know, it depends. We could start off being a bit easier on you. You can tell me the kind of beer. Um, but then, you know, there's like levels of graduation where you get to more, you, you know, defined. Points. Yeah, absolutely. There's bonus points as you go through to see if you can figure out actually which beer it is. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that, that's fine. I'm up to the challenge. Yeah. But at least I am from the south, right? And you, you know, we're, we're here in the south, but I'm from the deep, <laughs> really, deep really, south. Really south, yeah. Yeah, it's so far okay. south that the next country is Antarctica. Do you want to get started Let's on this? Absolutely. Let's drink some beer. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. So you, you've been here for a while now. You've been here for like a few days, and I'm sure you've gone out drinking and you know had yeah. the local brews. What what is? How does it compare to New Zealand? Uh, it's very very similar. I mean, um, uh, there's some different flavors that I've had while in the Durham area that I haven't had before, like a very spicy uh, a beer that I had the other night. I really like IPAs, and some of the IPAs are really excellent. Um, cool. And I think that's really good as you travel around the US, like West Coast, East Coast, the microbreweries are completely different between the coasts and there's a whole lot of different variety as well. So if you really like beer, I think you could basically go around the outside of the United States and get some of the best beers in the world without a doubt. Cool. All right. Well, let's start with beer letter A. Letter A? Okay. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. That's a good one. It is. I like. I actually like that. I chose this because it was sort of sinking a mile, sort of a day, and you know, nice refreshing ale to get started. <laughs> and I'm not this saying is, it's an ale. This though. is. Oh. Okay. Well, <laughs> that was just to put you off and confuse you, of course. Okay. Well, I don't think it's a lager, but you know, the more I drink it, I don't know. I'll put it off till later. Okay. So you're from New Zealand. Yep. Uh, and Nutanix, as far as I know, doesn't have a New Zealand office unless it's your office, right? So yeah, exactly. how, how did you uh, end up in Nutanix and, and what, what drew you? Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool story. So my Nutanix story starts in probably February uh, 2013 with uh, Star Trek. Please elaborate. <laughs> so, yeah, I will elaborate on that. So um, Nutanix did a marketing event around the globe. It was a global event um, with the Star Trek movie. So they hired out all these movie theaters all over the world. They happen to have one in Auckland, which is where I live in New Zealand. And um, they had a video before this about all of the, you know, what Nutanix is. And, and some of my uh, friends that I knew that I worked with at VMware were all about how cool the technology is and how it works. And, the, and the, just this brief video on how Nutanix works. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And the movie's great. And that was all I thought at the time. Um, and then I was trying to hire this, um, this loud, um, obnoxious Australian um, to join my team at VMware because I was running the business critical apps team across the globe at that point. And um, he rang me up one morning, it was a Saturday, and I was at my, uh, one of my son's kindergartens at an event. And he said, oh, I'm joining this new company, it's really cool, I'm going to be doing all this business critical apps stuff and it's called Nutanix. And I'm like, really? Is that right now? You're, so you're not joining me and my team, you're going to join Nutanix instead. And he's like, yeah, it's really cool, I'm going to do all this stuff. And I'm like, I talked to him about it and I said, well, it sounds like an awesome opportunity. Um, you should definitely do that because he was at IBM at that stage. And uh, so that was Josh Hodges. Um, oh. So he's VCDX number 90 and he's MPX number one. I'm MPX number 007 because I thought that was cooler. Ooh, nice. <laughs> um, and, and, and then that was it. And then we started chatting more and more. And then the more that I researched, I did a whole lot of due diligence because Josh was always trying to encourage me to, to look at this a lot further. I, I saw a massive opportunity to um, fix so many fundamental problems that businesses have with technology. So that's really what got me um, super interested in Nutanix, was just removing all of that complexity. Yes. And it's very, very easy to talk to customers about all their pain points, the things that are going wrong for them today, because it's happening to every single 
organization. It's just way too complicated and doesn't need to be complicated. And I just got this feeling, why am I doing all this stuff every day? It just doesn't make any sense. Provisioning lens, doing zoning, uh, and doing all these things that adds absolutely no value. The CEO doesn't care. The CEO doesn't care, but the problem is it takes six to nine weeks to do anything. And in a lot of cases, I, upgrades took six months to do an upgrade. That's pretty rough. Just yeah. a simple upgrade. We can do it in five minutes. We can go and have a beer and do an upgrade. <laughs> so, in fact, I am doing an upgrade right now on the, on the test clusters that I'm working on at the moment nice. as I'm having beer. Uh, and I know that it's going to work. So, beer beer. The beers are kind of, uh, it looks like it was, it was as a little bit of a pour because they ran out in the keg. Yeah, they ran out this of the This is keg. a popular beer, so I'm excited exactly. about this guy. So let's go ahead, let's go for it. And that, uh, cheers. Cheers. That is good. Mm. It's cloudier than the other one too. It's totally not a, it's not a Pilsner or like a lager, so. So I made it really hard for you to, to pick what the first two were. <laughs> On purpose. So you were scheming right before the show, Exactly. Right? Yeah, it was part of my evil plan. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so what? Are, let's let's move away from Nutanix for a second. What are you most excited about, uh, just externally, right, technology-wise? Could be anything. Flash. Flash. Yeah, and the different forms of Flash. Ooh, let's zoom in on so that. So Flash, Flash is absolutely fundamentally changing the data center and everything about it. It's changing economics, it's changing the way we build data centers, it's changing the way that we build networks. Um, and it's gonna replace hard drives. It's just a matter of time. Right. The economics for flash is so much different. Even though it's expensive at the moment for large capacity devices, that's gonna change. The power consumption is so much lower, the performance is so much higher. You can pack so much more capacity and so much little data center space. And if you look at where the problems are today, it's around cost of real estate, cost of labor, um, and also the capacity that comes into that as well. So if you can get a half a petabyte of flash in like, I don't know, six rack units or something like that, um, which uses a few hundred watts of power. That's pretty compelling. Um, the problem is, if you're trying to access it over a network, the network's too slow. So the fundamental problem with flash is that, you know, like uh, the flash drives that we have today, um, a drive can do 500 megabytes a second. That's not really that big a problem because the network's at 10 gig and that's so a gigabyte a second, right? So two drives will saturate a 10 gig link. The problem is going to start when you go down the road of NVMe, which is the next generation of flash technology, which is six to eight times faster than what we've got today. And this is only a few months away before it's in ready production everywhere. Um, a single drive is three gigabytes per second. So it's going to take a 40 gig NIC to, um, for one single drive, but all of, all of the platforms that are going to be out there are going to have multiples of these drives. So the network already is too slow, but how many, how many people have got 40 gig NICs in every single server? Almost nobody. So already the network is too slow for that flash and that's not even that fast. So the next generation of flash is 3D Crosspoint. That's a thousand times faster than NVMe. So that's gonna be nanosecond access times and tens of gigabytes per second per device. And that's only two years away, two to three years away. So even if you had a hundred gig network, it's too slow. Even if you had a terabit network, it's too slow. So the only way to actually effectively utilize Flash is to have them in the server where the applications are. And those are gonna drive uh, massive changes in the way that applications are designed and written, the way that the data centers are put together, the way that you connect servers in a data center to the network. Basically, the whole landscape is gonna be influenced because of Flash technology. Where's all the research for this being done, right? So like, where are all these innovations coming from? Is it coming from universities or is it coming from corporate research or? It's a, it's a combination like, of all of that stuff. Right. So universities are a big part of this. Um, corporations are a big part of it. Public cloud is another big part of it. Um, you know, um, all of the, the startups, um, you know, they're investing in different forms of flash. Even some of the, you know, really well-established uh, technology vendors such as Intel. Intel's one of the biggest influences in this, this market at the moment. Um, the interesting thing though is the public cloud providers, especially when you're not in the United States, it's very difficult to get high bandwidth, low latency connections to anything that, that looks like a public cloud. Um, and with flash technology being so disruptive and so low latency, high speed, if you put a network in the way, it's just a waste of time. So there's some, there's some really big challenges that these public cloud providers are gonna have to face and they either have to put points of presence in smaller places that have to be more local to where the people are or something's gonna to have to change there, otherwise you know, we can't deliver unlimited 
low latency networking around the world because it's limited by the speed of light and this, you know, the laws of physics, those pesky laws of physics ah, getting in the way. Ah. <laughs> so you were just like a well of knowledge. So Michael, it's time to move on to a new beer, a new question. We're gonna move away from technology. I'm gonna ask you, what do you like to do for fun? Just, you know, outside of work and, you know. <laughs> so the funny thing is I love my work. So my, my hobby is like performance testing on the weekends. Uh, no, seriously. Um, uh, I have a wife and four kids at home, four boys. So we love to go out and to go to the local parks. And uh, I like going to restaurants and um, just spending time with, with my kids. My oldest son is actually the youngest Nutanix certified professional in the world. He's only eight years old. Um, but you know, so he loves technology just like I do, and, and my other kids all have different sort of you know, technology favourites and stuff. We go in the backyard, we've got a bit of, you know, bit of space out there and throw a ball around, go on a trampoline. But otherwise, yeah, movies, I like movies. You know, uh, Deadpool was a movie I watched on the plane up That's here. That's really good. Fantastic movie, so funny. Never let my kids watch it though. <laughs> Not until they're at least 18 or something. Um, and Kung Fu Panda 3, that was another really good movie wow, that's, I watched. Those are like two totally different movies. And I think I like Kung Fu Panda just as much as I like Deadpool. Okay, yep. all right, so you, tell me about your blog. Uh, so what do, you, what do you normally blog about? My blog is sort of named after New Zealand. So the, the, the nickname for New Zealand is the land of the long white cloud, which in the local Maori language is Aotearoa. So my blog is called longwhiteclouds.com with an S on the end. Um, and it's really mainly about business critical applications, monster virtual machines, you know, high performance type uh, things. Yeah, I noticed we just kind of got started and never like officially tasted beer C. But it's very obvious what beer C is. It's so chocolatey. <laughs> There's only one type of chocolatey beer that that could be. So I'm gonna try and take guesses here, okay? This is some kind of chocolate stout, or porter. I'm gonna to lean towards stout though. A chocolate stout of some kind. Yep. Um, this guy. It's either like some kind of weak American Hefeweizen or like, it's, got, it's gotta be that. Like this is, this, this is like, it's like an American trying to do a Hefeweizen. That's what I'm gonna guess there. I'm probably gonna be wrong and sound like a total idiot, but, uh, and then this guy. It's like totally a Pilsner. It's not a lager, it has too much flavor. Yep, uh, you got that one spot on. Okay, good, all you're right. Wr you're wrong on the middle one though. I was wrong on the middle one? Yeah. Damn it. So, so what, what was B? B is, uh, it was brewed for North Carolina Beer Month uh, as a collaboration between breweries. Oh, it's right. an IPA with nectarines. What? Yeah. Yeah, he what? So far off, it wasn't funny. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I don't. I don't see it. And I don't see it because I'm unrefined swine. Apparently, it's it's, it's cool. And see, uh, you were so right. You pretty much got the name right. It's yeah. called chocolate. Oh. Like by Southern Tier, a chocolate stout. Wow. It's hard to screw up a chocolate stout. Yeah. So. Well. All right. I gave myself away. I'm no pro here. That was good though. I chose the right beers. <laughs> well, I liked this one the most. I liked A second and B. <laughs> Thanks for your wisdom and like for oozing technology onto us. This is like the best beer and engineering conversation I've ever had, so. No problem, it's been fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs>